Okay, welcome back to episode two of Rebuilding the Vocal Booth. Behind me currently you see my vocal room. This is where I do all of my auditioning, all of my live sessions, all of my pre-recorded sessions. This is where I do everything. It's not a huge fancy room, it's just a room that does the trick and that's what I'm gonna be showing you how to do. So in this segment, we're going to be emptying everything out of here. I have a little bit of a surprise that I just got in the mail today that I'm gonna be unboxing and showing you guys as well. That's going to be making all of the difference in your room as well as showing you what you really should be looking for or trying to hear when it comes to you setting up your space. This is pretty much what we were talking about before. This is what came for me today and it's the first part of the actual studio build. So as I open this box, we're going to see something that we talked about in the first video. That's very heavy. Uh, this is mass loaded vinyl. It's very heavy, dense material, and it works for soundproofing. You see, this is about 25 square feet of material and this 25 square feet of material is a pound per square feet. So this is 25 pounds in this uh, bundle right here. And what this is going to do is it's going to work to prevent sounds from entering or exit your actual space. This is what's going to be necessary for the soundproofing. Most of this video is going to be just done in the voiceover and you're going to see me actually working to get this stuff on the walls. And then we're gonna come back because if I try and put this up and talk to camera at the same time, I'm probably gonna die. Cause like I said, this is 25 pounds, but this is really the first step of the process. So if you have the ability, what you're going to look to do is hang this onto the walls. If you can get it away from the wall to create a double layer of space by adding studs and then putting this on top of the studs to have an air gap in between this and the first wall, and then another wall and then outside, you're gonna get the best bang for your buck, but we're just gonna start by putting this up on the walls. Okay, before we go ahead and do the studio tour, there's a couple of nerdy things that we have to talk about. The nerdy things that people don't like to talk about that actually make the biggest difference when it comes to what we're doing here, making a studio environment, and that is the principle of sound. So I'll try and make this a little bit interesting for you. Sound is an energy. Sound waves emanate from a sound source. So if I'm talking right now, sound waves, energy is leaving my mouth, it's going, it's being picked up by this microphone, it's being turned into something that you can understand. Sound waves are leaving your speakers, your uh, headphones, it's going into your ears, those waves are being turned into something you can understand, and it happens every day, every day, every day. So sound is an energy. And just like we learned in school, Energy can't be destroyed, but it can be transitioned and transferred to another source. And that is all that we are doing here. We're trying to take the powerful energy of sound and either dissipate it so that it's a lot less powerful or transition it so that it's a different form of energy entirely. Mass loaded vinyl is a very heavy, very thin, but very dense material. When sound hits mass loaded vinyl, it essentially spreads out across the surface and the energy can't go through it because it's very dense. That is one of the principles of this material. Now, there are a lot of things that you do. These are double walls with mass loaded vinyl, an air gap, insulation, and then the outside. So there are a lot of different things that help it so that sound can't get into this space. Is that necessary for you? No, but let me give you a little bit of a better example that you might be able to visualize. Sound is a lot like water. Let's take this tap as a sound source and the sink as your ear. If I turn on the tap, you see water is just flowing down so you are hearing everything unencumbered. This aluminum foil, this is like mass loaded vinyl. If I put it in between the sound source and your ear, it is hitting this and it can't get through. The reason why most people do this is so that they can record at any hour of the day. They can record at 9 a.m., at 6 a.m., at 1 p.m., at 3 p.m. These are all times that your neighbor's lawnmower more than likely is going to be going, but it's so that they can record at any time. But if you just do soundproofing and then have nothing on your walls, it's still going to be an echoey mess. An echoey mess that you can't hear anything outside of, but it's still gonna be an echoey mess. So that leads into what we love as voiceover artists, and that is foam. Let me put you on to two things though. The foam that you get from Amazon is damn near useless and the foam that you get from Guitar Center is overpriced. Foamfactory.com sells high quality foam. This is not an ad. I've just used them five times, they've never let me down. High quality foam, audio foam, they give you the actual acoustical values of this foam and they sell it for a reasonable price. That is all that I ask. If you're looking for foam, 
Check them out, foamfactory.com, trying to save your wallet. Now, what does foam do if it's not transitioning this energy to a different form? Foam, unlike mass-loaded vinyl and all of these soundproofing things that we try and use, is working to absorb that sound, those waves, that energy, so that it has less of a time bouncing back into your microphone. That is the whole point. We want to create a delay from sound bouncing onto a surface and entering your microphone. That causes that reverb that you hear. All those audio engineers out there who I hear screaming at your computer who's about to go to your keyboard, we're not talking about the difference between reverb and echo. I know that there's a difference. I have the same degree. We're not talking about it because it's not important to this overall concept. The base of the concept is we're taking something soft and dense, thick. We want three to four inch thick foam. One to two inches isn't really gonna do too much. And we're gonna be putting it on our walls. Now you don't just need foam. You can use surfaces that are in different structures like this. This is actually a slat wall, acoustic slat wall that uses fleece. It doesn't have to just be a soft, dense material that might make your room sound too dead. But once again, we're not getting into that conversation. This is the base level of the conversation. But that's the difference between soundproofing something and sound treating something. When you proof it, you're trying to stop sound from either entering or exiting. And when you're treating it, you're trying to stop those sound waves from bouncing all around your room and either getting back in your ears or getting back into your microphone. And those are the two main differences. But I've held you up long enough with all the nerdy stuff. Let's go ahead and talk about this room that we're in, my brand new studio. Now, I'm gonna pop out how much it cost on the screen here. That's really what everybody's looking for. But long story short, the thing that I wanted to get across, whether you do it for free, or whether you do it for cheap, like this construction, they all can work to get you gigs. At the end of the day, that's what I want to, I want to show and I want to say. Why did I make this construction? Well, number one, because I highly believe that the space that you're working in has to be conducive to making you feel good. And this is just well designed in a way that I feel a lot better to work than when it is just a dead, damp black cube. I like this construction better. Number two, there's more space to move around, obviously. Acting is about live life, bringing something to life. And even though you can get work, and I have get, gotten work, and you can get work by acting in your closet, if it's a small, tight, cramped space, it makes it that much harder. In this space, just like I'm getting work here, like I did before, I can move around more. I can be more expressive. I can bring things to life in a different way than I couldn't before when I had a smaller closet. But both of them work. That's what I want you to keep in mind at the end of the day, both of these paths work. Now, if you have any questions, reach out to me. I love to help where and when I can. Uh, just hit me up via email uh, on Instagram, any of my social channels. Follow me at any of my social channels. It's just Javon Henry underscore. It's down in the description along with all of the materials that I used in order to get this construction happening. And I just want to take a second and thank you guys. It has been a little bit of a hiatus. I'm happy to be back and I'm excited to see what this channel will bring in the future. Catch you in the next one.